challenges we may have in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. I'm reading to you from verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? That's what we are living for. That's the only thing we are supposed to do. And then they commanded them, they said, We told you, don't preach in this name. And then it says, But now, behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and, and intend to break this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than tell me. Amen. We are going to say that together. We ought to obey God rather than men. Can you say that with me? We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. Say that aloud. And I'm saying that Jesus commanded go and preach. He didn't command go and sing. And I'm saying that Jesus commanded preach the gospel to every creature. Don't just stay in a local church and then doing all the merry-go-round and saying the same thing a thousand times to the same people. He said, go to new people, go to your neighbors, go to your community and go everywhere and preach. And then there are some people, they are setting us back and they, they are kind of really clean us. They are saying, church planting, church planting. They want church everywhere. Church over here and church over here. This new kind of thing that is coming. All those people are enemies of the gospel. But the people that are united together with Christ, they are saying, yes, that's what God said. If we have to abandon every other thing, if we have to push aside every other thing, this is what to do. And this is what our lives are meant for. That's why the apostle said, you cannot tell us not to teach, and not to preach, and not to evangelize, and not to win souls. Christ died. And he gave us the good news. Go tell everybody. And then they said, we ought to obey God rather than, rather than men. And that is what we are all saying. That is what you are saying. I said that is what you are saying. And as we go out, we are going to do it in Jesus' name. Evangelism will be a focus. Reaching out to perishing souls will be a focus. That is what we gave our lives for. And that is what Christ has commanded us. We are going to do it in Jesus' name. And when we do it in the way He wants us to do it. And then we listen. Emphasis on things that Christ has not commanded. And we exalt. We lift up what Jesus Christ has commanded. Exploits supernatural power, miracles, signs, and wonders will follow us in Jesus' name. And you know the people that are asking for miracles, you know, this will happen, this will happen. They will not happen except we concentrate on what Christ has given that power. The power to do miracles, what he has given it for. We're talking about exploits through daily but, but Pentecostal witness every day. It's not just you just do one day, one Saturday or one Sunday and then you forget all about it. It's every day. Daily Pentecostal witness. I'm coming to three points. Number one, the call. Number two, the concourse. And number three, the comforter. Number one, the call to daily persuasive witness. The call to daily persuasive witness the call that's a commandment that's a commission that's the call he has given us and it says the call to daily persuasive witness number two the concourse with divine prevailing weapon we have the weapon in our hand we have the instrument in our hand we have the tool in our hand and he has given us this weapon it's divine and it makes us more than conquerors the conquerors with divine prevailing weapon number three the comforter and his penetrating wisdom the comforter and the penetrating wisdom the spirit not the wisdom of man that cannot obey god but the wisdom of the spirit himself the comforter and his penetrating wisdom number one 
the call to daily persuasive witness. We're looking at Acts chapter 1 again. Acts chapter 1. We're looking at verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Witnesses not unto yourself. Witnesses not unto your denomination. Witnesses not unto your friends. Witnesses not unto your own personal opinion. But witnesses unto Christ. What does that mean? That Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. That he died to save sinners. And that his will, his desire, his passion is for the whole of the world to be saved. He is not willing that anybody should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Go and Give a witness to that, that Jesus Christ so loved us, he died for the world. And give a witness to that, that God in heaven does not want to judge anyone to go to hell. He wants everybody to repent and to turn unto the Lord. Go and give a witness unto that, that there's no other name whereby we must be saved. It is only Jesus that brings the salvation. Go and bring a witness to that. He says, shall see power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto that Thomas part of the earth. Look at that word, both. It doesn't say first in Jerusalem. When you finish in Jerusalem, then go to Samaria, Judea. When you finish in Judea, then you go to Samaria. Then when you finish in Samaria, then the uttermost part of the earth, they are ready. No, it says he was telling not just one man, not just one man. He was telling every one of them. He said, you are going to receive the power. How many of them received the power on the day of Pentecost? How many people? Tell me out loud. 120 and all the 120 people that got that power he said you'll be witnesses unto me why do we leave the work to one peter why do we leave the work to one john why do we leave the work to one gs that he is the one to run here to go to jerusalem and then samaria and then judea and then to the uttermost part of the earth and then i have all these uh, making calls from that country uh, pastor you have not visited us we're expecting you then the state is calling pastor and uh, we have not uh, seen you for some time we're expecting you and the us is calling we have pastor what's happening what have we done we're expecting you and then uk is calling pastor we're waiting we're your children to where we're waiting for you what are you waiting for me when you get the commission to everybody and i'm the one to go to jerusalem and the one to go to judea and the one to go to samaria and the one to go to other most part of them when all these thousands of people are there what are we doing that we need only one man to do the work of ten thousand people how can that be done that's a load nobody can carry but when you go over there, you go over there, you go over there, drop your violin, you go over there, drop your trumpet and go over there, drop your keyboard and go over there, and drop whatever is your hand, go over there. And then all the force together that have the power and the anointing. And then we go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. This world will know the Lord Jesus Christ in a very short time. It will happen. I said it will happen. And that's the reason why the Lord is saying everybody should go. You know, sometimes when, when you know we make some alterations and some changes, there are some people that are sitting back there. And uh, instead of praying for us that God will help us to do more of this, I told you recently, I said now that you have been blessed with this powerful message. Our bottom, our address is at the bottom of the uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Do I, do I say one more time, say, oh, 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 Lord.